be working on some passing against the Cedar Gardens. So Kayla's going to be down. OK, so what we looked at um, throughout the week was first the entry, like making sure we're entering into a good position. I don't want to just be kind of walking at him willy nilly. I don't want him to get leg control on me because then he'll put go to shin to shin or single leg X. So again, we're real low. I'm making sure my hands are the first thing he encounters, all right? So we looked at our knee cut from here, just like that blast knee cut where I step in the middle, and then we looked at the cross step where I'm stepping through that gap. What we're gonna go over tonight is gonna be a little Kimura trap, okay? So we're gonna be doing a rolling Kimura from here. So for those of you who remember, um, the Kimura is a ratchet lever that gives us really, really powerful rotational control of our opponent's shoulder. So if I just have Caleb lay on his back real quick. So by utilizing this Kimura grip here, it's going to enable me to control how he rotates. So if he tries to turn away from me, I can use the Kimura to pull him. If he tries to turn into me, I can use the Kimura to push him. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rolling to get that Kimura grip. Scoot forward a little bit there for me, Caleb. OK, so first things first, guys. I'm going to be stepping in between the legs again, but I'm going to be stepping in nice and deep, OK? Because if I step in shallow, then it's just going to give him too much space. Now, again, we're trying to avoid the shin to shin guard, OK? So as I step in, I'm stepping in nice and deep, and I'm just going to be getting my hands to the tricep and the shoulder here. Once I get my knee in, it, I could go for the Kimura grip right here. OK, I could just come right here. But here's the problem. He still has his alignment, OK? He could just start coming up on a single leg right now and just making my life more difficult than it needs to be. So I need to break his alignment first before I can attack that Kimura grip. So entrance, remember, I want to hand fight first. So when I'm here, generally we'll look to go for the meat of the thumbs, and we'll just circle that out. As we do it, we step in. I'm going to check him with my knee. So I'm just going to use that knee to bump him forward a little bit. Now, because I've bumped him backwards, he's having to use his abs to stay sitting up. So now I've broken his posture. Now, at this point, I come through, I get the Kimura grip. So left hand, in this case, my right foot's in front. Left hand is grabbing the wrist. Right hand comes over, and I grab my wrist. Now, all we're going to do is I'm going to drive my shoulder to the mat as I roll over, and I'm immediately pushing his hand back towards his hip. OK, I'm on my side facing him here. I'm extending this arm away, trying to keep his elbow off the mat. We'll stop here, but we'll look at how we can get to the back once we're in this position. All right, so let's rotate this way. OK, so again, I'm nice and low. I'm entering carefully. I control. I peel his hands away. I step in. As soon as I step in, I want to get control. There's no collars and things to grab, so I'm just going to get my hands into the tricep grip, shoulder. I check him with the knee. I'm not trying to hit him hard. I'm just trying to get him to move back a little bit. I check him with the knee as I slide down, and I roll. Immediately, I'm on my side, and I'm trying to shove that hand right towards his hip. So both of my arms are extended out. Okay, Both of my arms are extended out here. It's going to be really easy to take the back once we get into this position, guys, because no matter how he rolls, he's going to expose his back in some way. OK, and we'll look at that in a second. But once you get here, you guys can play around a little bit and think about how you can get to the back or how you could just come up, attack arm bars, stuff like that. OK, so I'll show one more time in slow motion from the top. We'll go from this perspective. So we're here, hand fight. And again, I'm pushing. I want to stay nice and close to him. If I'm far away like this, notice how I create that bend in his arm. I don't really want that bend. I actually want his arm to be extended, and I'm pushing it towards his hip. OK, we'll show from this side one more time. So we're hand fighting. I strip the grip. I step in, check, roll through, and I'm pushing that arm away. All right, so uh, as far as that roll is going, if you're concerned about that, all I'm doing is this. Once I get the Kimura grip, my right shoulder is going to touch down right here. I'm looking at the Kimura. Don't look this way. You're going to hurt your neck. So I'm looking over at the Kimura. I'm nice and low. This isn't like a speed thing. We can go very great, very like sort of gradual. As I drive my knee into him, look. I just naturally roll over. It doesn't have to be some sort of like jumping, flying pass. It can be, but it can be very slow and gradual too. Okay, so again, I'm here, open up, step in, check him, get the grip, roll through, but make sure I'm pushing that arm back towards him. I want to keep his elbow off the mat to not deny him base. If he manages to get that elbow to the floor, now he can use it to generate base. So I'm trying to keep his elbow off the mat, making sure I'm using this ratchet lever. So a ratchet lever is where I'm using one lever to control another lever. Okay. So it's going to enable me to get shoulder control here. Cool. Any questions, guys? Let's get it ready. One, two. So any questions about that setup? So remember, when we're going against a seated guard player, we want to be kind of 
um, what's the word? We don't necessarily want to be like overly aggressive, but we do want to kind of put them on the defense, right? Because when he's in the seated guard, he's looking to advance, he's looking to sweep, he's looking to get shin to shin or single leg X. So we want to be kind of constantly annoying him a little bit. So that's why we're engaging with the hand fight. You know, we're stiff arming, we're pushing the head. And so we open up that gap to get our, our knee in. That knee, remember I'm checking him, pushing him back a little bit, not to hurt him, but just to break his posture. If he's leaning forward like this, even if I get this Kimura control, it's still really likely that he can just stand up on a single leg or just continue, yeah, he can still sweep me. And now, cool, you got a Kimura, but he's still up on a single leg, so he's still coming up on a takedown. So I wanna make sure that I break his posture first, just to make that more difficult for him. So we're here, I bump him, I grab, we roll. So once I get into this position, I'm trying to push his hand right down into his hip, keeping his elbow off the mat. Okay, so you guys may have already noticed that there's a lot of cool things I can do from here, right? Of course, I can start stepping over, like the leg scissor. I could come up here and immediately start attacking for Kimura, arm bars, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the back. So there's two ways that my partner can move once they're in this position. They could sit straight up, or there's technically three ways. They could sit straight up, or they could turn to a side, right or left. If they were to sit straight up, I'm simply gonna keep the Kimura, I'm gonna slide my knee to my elbow. Keep sitting up there for me, Caleb. And as he sits up, I'm just gonna start inserting this opposite side hook. Okay, I'm gonna go for the opposite side hook first because this is already giving me the rotational control on this side to prevent him from turning into me. Because remember, if he turns into me, I'm gonna be pushing that away. I can then use the knee wedge to take him over and get the hook on the other side. Once I'm here, we can trade off with a one-on-one -on -one grip and then come in for our normal back control. Or you can just maintain control with the Kimura control. Lots of controls, right? Generally, when we're using the uh, Kimura grip here, we like to use it from the underhook side, okay? With kind of like that high back mount position, body triangles. So uh, generally, if you're gonna utilize the uh, Kimura control from the back, let's try to use it from the underhook. But more commonly than just sitting straight up is going to be them turning, okay? Nine times out of 10, they're probably gonna try to turn into you because what did they just see? They just see me fall over. And so they saw me fall over, they wanted to try to consolidate this and try to come up on top of me, right? If I didn't have the Kimura, he can just come up on top. Awesome, yeah. He's like, dude, this guy's not great at jiu-jitsu, let me get on top of him now. But again, we have this control. If I lose this in the transition, then I can still come up on top to get to a good position. But because we have this, as he turns into me, I can start walking my chest to his spine. Again, I'm still trying to push this hand down into his hip bone. I'm just gonna walk my chest to his spine, just like we do for our normal back control movements. Once I'm in this position, I'm gonna get my opposite side hook. We're gonna try to get that toe curl underneath, okay? And now what I'm gonna start using is active, accessing this lever on the other side, driving off of my active toes here as I pull him across my body, okay? Once we're here, I follow him, and then I can throw my hook in the other way, okay? So let's do that from the beginning here for me, Caleb. So we're here, we're hand fighting, boom, I bump, I roll, he turns in, I run and follow. My chest to his spine. And I wanna to to stay like we would in the back mount. I don't wanna be up here, okay? My chest is nowhere near his spine now. So I wanna stay nice and close, fit in, just like this. Top leg goes over, I try to hook underneath, okay? Now from this position, active toes to drive, I'm gonna pull my knee to my chest, and that's gonna give me the lever control to his hip. Okay, if I just try to take this leg and pull it open right now, my knee bends at this awkward angle. So I pull my knee to my chest first, and then I take him over. I can throw in the other hook. Alternatively, if they turn away from us, we're here. If they turn away from us, then we're just gonna come up on our knees, and we're gonna go for chair sit. Okay, just like we would when they expose the back. Okay, that one's probably the most, uh, uh, you know, natural for us because we know our chair sits pretty well. So again, if he's turning away from me, I run my hips away and I immediately come up on top. Looking to get chest to spine, I fit in for the chair sit, bring him over, and then you're ready to attack. Again though, most commonly, they're gonna wanna turn in to get on top. Okay, so we'll start uh, primarily drilling that one. We'll rotate this way for me. So we're here, okay, I'm engaging wisely. I clear the space, bump him, roll, he starts turning in. I walk my legs in towards him, making sure I pull this knee in first so I can access that lever to take him over. As soon as we're here, top side hook can go in. Rotate a little bit this way for me, Caleb. If you guys end up in this position, all right, and I don't want the Kimura control here, we're gonna go two on one, right, like this, one on one, 
and then I just start transitioning for my normal back mount, okay? I can even use the trap here, looking for the Renica choke. If you want to utilize the Kimura control, great too. Okay, so we'll go one more time. Head on. So we're, so we're here, boom, boom, boom. Bump, roll, he's turning. I follow, I get the hook in, making sure I'm pulling. I'm driving with that forearm, using that elbow to break his posture. Take the back. All right, guys. So it's almost like you're, like with all of our back takes, your chest is a magnet to their spine, okay? Your chest, their spine, constantly trying to smack into each other, okay? Go slow, of course. Let the person on top start to turn in, and then we'll take their back. One, two. Hey guys, come on back real quick. So I want to touch on a couple things. So some of us are having some difficulty with the transition to the back. <clears throat> so I'll show a couple things here. So if you're if you're having tricky uh, if you're having trouble with the transition to the back, um, if you guys remember a couple months ago we were working on back resets, we utilized that twister hook to reset with the chair sit. So you can utilize the same sort of uh, mechanism when you take the back here. So what I mean is this: as I do the roll. He turns in, I run in, I get my chest to his spine. So once I'm here, I get the twister hook. We can start building up our base on our right elbow, okay? Once I build up my base on my right elbow, my right knee comes up to my right elbow. And so now we can just hit like a normal chair sit, okay? So if you were having trouble with bringing them over, which is totally understandable, especially if you're going against somebody bigger than you, of just trying to use the opposite side twister hook here to pull them over, totally understandable. Remember, you can always build up to your elbow too. So again, all I was doing was, if my leg is trapped underneath him, here, I got the tricep, or the Kimura control, I'm gonna build up onto my right knee, my right elbow, and I just basically hit a chair sit motion as I take him over. And then I can take the back from there as well. So from the top, we're here, boom, boom. I roll, he turns in. As we're turning in, maybe I just can't pull him over, okay? So it's all good. I'm gonna get my right elbow on the mat, try to keep his elbow off the floor if you can, okay? As I come up, active toes, my knee comes to my elbow here. Now I just hit a chair sit. So there's no, this one's gonna be a little bit easier against bigger guys because you're getting up above them, okay? I'm kind of like enveloping their body and I'll be able to just sit to my hip, rotate to the other hip and bring him over, okay? And one last thing, once you end up in this position, you're never gonna have like the perfect transition to the back. You're gonna, there's gonna be scrambles, there's gonna be a lot of movement involved. So what I want is the person who's getting their back taken, give a little bit of resistance now. Okay, so fight a little bit, turn, try to get away, have the top person fight to get to your back. Try to get, try to, get to that back however you can. Just remember, sternum to spine and get to that connection with the hooks, okay? So bottom person can fight a little bit, resist, top person try to get there, one, two, let's get it. 